Let's not delay any further. Let's hear from our beloved brother. Please welcome him back to these microphones, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, once again, it is my great privilege and pleasure to be here with you to share with you some of what we have learned as a result of being students of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The Quran teaches us that Allah God is the best Noah. That says a lot if we would but understand. God knows best and the only way that we as human beings can approach God is to know better than what we know. The best knowledge that could be given is the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self. <coughs> the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there is nothing else that another teacher could teach. For he has taught us deeply into the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self. So many scholars and scientists of Islam did not uh, take the time to try to understand the theology of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And as a result, they are the losers. Yes. They could not bear the thought that a man born from among the black people of North America could be a messenger of God and more than that. They couldn't bear that thought. So in hearing him say to the world that he was and is the messenger of Allah to us all, they were so hurt because in their understanding they know of no messenger coming after the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Well that is your understanding and you are certainly entitled to that understanding. I will agree with you that there are no more prophets to come. That's right. <laughs> but I can never agree with you that God has finished revealing messages to us as human beings. The prophet brings vision and that vision is contained in what is called scripture. The prophet does not necessarily give the full light of understanding of every aspect of the scripture that he brings. The prophet leaves room for the student to study and for God to reveal to the sincere heart of the student deeper insight into the message given by the prophet. Since the Quran teaches us that that one or those persons whom Allah favors, he gives, he gives them understanding of religion. 
Well, if God favors you and then blesses you with understanding and you teach it, then what is that that you are teaching? It is a message. Who is that message from? It is from he who gives the understanding. Then that is Allah. Then when you speak the message and are true to the message, then you are a messenger of God. Since the message didn't come from you, it came from God, then who are you but a messenger of God? Does the black man need a message from God? Does the Western world need a message from God? Look at your condition. You have messages, but your message has not reformed you and me to make us representative of God. Are you clear? Yes, sir. Then the black man and woman needs a message. America needs a message. The world needs a message. That message is contained in the Quran and in the Bible. But there has to be a deeper understanding of both books in order to revive human beings and change their condition. The message as it is now is not deep enough nor strong enough to affect a transformation in the lives of humanity that would make human beings acceptable to God and bring them into the favor of God. So if this is a message from a prophet and it still needs plumbing to get more out of it, you can study it all day and all night, all year for the rest of your life and not arrive at a proper understanding. Right. But if Allah blesses you with a proper understanding of the book and he and he alone only knows its meaning. Yes. So when he reveals it to whom he pleases, that is a blessed and honored servant and that servant is a messenger of God. Today, we don't use the term messenger for Elijah Muhammad. Because he has transcended right. that title. I want you to listen real good. Because messenger does not adequately describe the work that Elijah Muhammad actually did and is doing today through those of us who work that program that he gave. I want you to hear me well. The work of Elijah Muhammad is the work of the presence of God. I'm going to say that again. The work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the work that bears witness to not God will come, God might come. It bears witness to the presence of God. So many of you have been thrown off the path by not understanding what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad meant when he said that Allah came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. You that condemn Elijah Muhammad and say that you know better than he, you have not approached one atom's weight of that man's work Though you claim to know better than he, you cannot duplicate what a man whom you said has inferior knowledge has done and is still doing that surpasses all of you that claim to know God and what he taught and what his message is. You cannot duplicate his work. 
You cannot make a follower to look like his. Right, right. You cannot make a follower to challenge the power of the world like he did. Yeah. But when Muhammad makes a man, no man can unmake what God and, Ma and Muhammad make. You can't handle that. This. Excuse me. Just, I'll answer your question at another time, brother. Just let me deliver my lecture, all right? Thank you. You must be a little more disciplined. Yes, sir. When a man is delivering a lecture, don't interfere with him. Right, right now. Right. Don't break into my lecture to ask me a question. Right. You didn't do that in school with lesser teachers. Right. Don't do it now with better than all the teachers that you ever had, not including the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Walaikum salam. Now, as I was saying, brothers and sisters, don't pay that no attention. We can handle that and then some. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we'll learn quickly who Allah is. You know, uh, brothers and sisters, seriously. The word and the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and those who challenge him, you know, it will soon be made manifest to the world who the man is yes, sir. and who his teacher is. We should not misunderstand words because words have the power of life and death in them. I want you to listen very carefully. No prophet of God was able to raise the dead. No prophet. No prophet could make the blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak. That work was the work of the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, he's not a prophet. He stands head and shoulders above the prophet. When the Messiah comes into the world, God is present in the world. And the work of the Messiah is the work of God in a man. So when you see God working in a man and through a man, then Allah is in the person of that man. This, the world is going to have to understand exactly why did Elijah Muhammad say that at this time in history? Why is it necessary? To be very specific and right to the point, it is necessary because man does not know himself as the glory of God. You do not know man yet. You have never seen man in the way God made man to be. You have never seen woman the way God made woman to be. You are not even a sign of who and what you could be in your present state. And this is why both the Bible and Quran talk about the resurrection of the dead. It's not dealing with any cemetery, but it's dealing with the power of God in man and woman that has been put to death by our rebellion against the law and the will of God. If we submit to God and follow the guidance of this anointed one, mm. then you will see the resurrection yes, of the dead and we will be changed. Mm. And in the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed yes, and we will be like him. Him who? This Messiah, this God in man. Now, brothers and sisters who are Muslims, 
Don't turn the radio off and say that Farrakhan has gone backwards. Don't be silly. Study the Quran. It is telling you what the destiny of man is. What the goal of man is. Why God created man for his glory. And he created man and put in man the same essence and power of himself potentially. And he says to man, if you submit to me, I will grow you and make you so powerful that I can order the angels and they will bow down to you. This is not what I made up. This is written in the Quran. That Allah created a man out of black mud and fashioned him into shape. And after he breathed into that man of his inspiration, he said to the angels, make obeisance to Adam. Bow down to him. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, if you are not to bow down to no God, Worship none but Allah. Why would Allah then make a man and then order the angels to bow down to a man that he made if he did not make man a God? Come on, you have the potential. You are not that now. I'm not that now. But we have the potential to become the master over all of the laws that govern the physical creation of God. We can be above and beyond the creation, though we too are creation. But we are so akin to the creator that as his glory, he can make man and make him powerful enough to command the forces of nature. Now, if you've never seen a man like that, and you have not, then when a man like that comes into the world, who are you looking at? If the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that a child was born on February the 26th, 1877, in the holy city of Mecca, you say, well, that can't be. He can't be that great. Wait a minute. Your hadith of Prophet Muhammad tells you to look for the Mahdi who would come out of the family of Muhammad. I want you to listen now. This Mahdi are one rightly guided and one who is self-guided and one who comes to guide others is one that will set justice in the earth and set down all tyrants and oppressors, yet he's a child and a man born like every other human being. But he will show you your potential because in his lifetime, he will grow to become master. And when he comes to destroy the work of this world, he will be present a human being in physical form yes, that will pass away. But what is in him yes, and what he expresses is the Lord of the worlds. So Elijah Muhammad was not incorrect. That's right. Allah did come yes, sir. in the person of that human being that walked among us that raised the honorable elijah muhammad that raised the nation and is now raising it again yes, never to fall yes, the holy quran opens with the second or the, uh, the first verse of the prayer Al-Fatiha, it says, All praise belongs to Allah. Is that right? Yes, 
Well, if all praise belongs to Allah, how can you justify as a human being wearing the name Muhammad, which means one worthy of praise and one praised much? The name Muhammad does not belong to us. It belongs to God. So if you are not worthy to carry praise, then you are called Muhammad. Then what is that in you working? And who are you praising when you praise Muhammad? Huh? Think of what I am saying. You and I are not worthy of praise. Is that right? So when God names a person Muhammad, He's saying, I'm in that man. Yes, and when that man works, he will do a work that will be worthy of praise and praise much. But you will be praising me in him. Yes. Prophet Muhammad did a work that has the scholars baffled today. And when you study deep into what Elijah Muhammad has done, you will be baffled by the extreme skill and wisdom displayed by that wonderful human being. Yes, sir. God working in a man, right. Muhammad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'll just say it, uh, if you don't mind. See, I'm an extension yes, sir. of that man. And the same God that worked in him is working in your brother and will work in you if you submit to and follow the guidance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, why did I say all of this? You know, the scholars of Islam want us to back away from recognition of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. Or recognition of Master Farad Muhammad. Right. You say we don't understand. We are preaching contrary. There's a billion of you. It couldn't be that you need to grow more in understanding. But we who say something different than what the scholars say. We need to grow more. Well, it was always the scholars who messed up religion. And it was always the so-called scholars who fought the prophets when they appeared. Because the scholars seem to believe that they have the corner on religion and knowledge and truth. They can't see knowledge and truth coming up from disrespected sources beneath their feet. Listen, Elijah Muhammad was given vision by God. That man could see tomorrow better than most of us see today. Now I ask you if you've ever heard Elijah Muhammad speak. And that man sat down at his dining room table and tell us things to come. That we could not see and didn't believe when he said it. But we have lived to see his word come to pass. Now, what is that? That enabled him to see the unseen. And hear a word that we would speak before the word was formed in our brain and told us what we would say. The man was given vision. And the scriptures of the Bible say, where there is no vision, the people perish. And if our community is perishing, we are failing in vision. If the Christian world is perishing, then the vision is not there. It is not in the cardinals. It is not in the Pope. 
It is not in Reagan and his cabinet. There's no vision there. So the nation is perishing. Leadership must have a vision of where Allah intends for his people or for, of what Allah intends for his people and where Allah intends for his people to go. What is that goal? What is that destiny? And it is the job of a servant of God to follow that vision and make the people ready to bring into reality the vision that is already reality but yet unseen. Ah, come on now. I want you to pay attention. I'm not going to be with you long. This book, Quran, there is no doubt in it. It is a guide to those who keep their duty, who believe in the unseen. The unseen does not mean the non-existent. Vision is real. Please pay attention. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, you may have a dream. Dreams may or may not be true. But he said all vision is true. When you have a vision, you're getting a glimpse of the unseen. But it's not unreal. What you see is reality that has not manifested. Are you listening? Yes. Now. If vision is reality unmanifested, but is as real as what you stand on that you put confidence in, then when a visionary gives you a vision that comes from God, you can stand on it. It is as sure as the earth beneath your feet, even though it is not in manifest reality, it is reality. God has already declared it. He said be, and all you got to do is hang in there and it will be reality. Do you understand? Now, When you have a group of people who don't have vision, day to day you come up out of your beds and lay down at night without a thought or a plan of where you want to go. That means you don't have any vision. You function on a day to day basis, you're just a blind liver not even a liver of life but you are dead yes, sir. mentally waiting for the ultimate reality of that death that has already taken place in the mind where there is no vision the people perish black people never had a vision because vision is preparing today for what you see coming tomorrow yes. black people don't think about tomorrow they hardly think about today and they are very capricious about yesterday yes. you need help brothers and sisters we we really need somebody to get us up out of this. And I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, I don't know a teacher or a teaching more able to affect black thought and get us up out of this condition than the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In the message, there is vision. You sit, you listen to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for a little while, and a vision for your life begins to take form. That's right. And you begin to determine, I I'm going to do this. Right. Why are you going to do that now? Because I see Talk where I'm going. Yes. Right. Why do you, what do you see about where you're going? You get a glimpse, yeah. right. a vision of tomorrow, which is truth. 
See, the vision hasn't manifested, but because you believe in the unseen. And you keep up prayer and you sacrifice to bring the vision and make it real. One day you walk right into the vision and the vision has become manifest. Not the vision has become real. The vision has become manifest. Ezekiel looked up one day. Yes, sir. And he saw a wheel in the middle of a wheel, way up in the middle of the air. See? Ezekiel saw reality that had not yet manifest. Now the Caucasian looks up and he sees a wheel. Black people looking up now, seeing a wheel. What wheel? You see these saucer-like planes that some would make you think are not real. Very real. Very powerful. very powerful, not from Mars, right. not from Venus, right. but from the Lord of the works. Yeah. Vision has become manifest. The unseen has become real. Yes, sir. This is why Jesus could say, before Abraham was, I am. How did you exist, Jesus? Before Abraham. Because God had already ordered me to come into existence. And when God said be, I was, but I just hadn't manifested yet. You didn't hear me. You don't realize, oh brother and sister, that the Lord of creation that originated the heavens and the earth has long, long time ago ordered a perfect human being. He wanted a perfect man. He wanted a man that would reflect him perfectly. He ordered it from the beginning when he started creation. It was imperfect. But he desired perfection and willed it. And therefore, they say the scholars that Jesus was back there with God in the beginning. All right. They don't know what they're saying, but I can tell them. The work of the originator is to be completed in a human being. And when that human being becomes manifest, you will see all of the powers of the originator in a human being. So when you see him, you see Allah. Because all of the powers of the originator are manifest now in a being that he ordered into existence. Before the man was a thought, he was reality. But reality had to wait until the proper time to make itself manifest. And when you see the reality manifest, you can't call it man. You can only say God in man. And that is what Jesus represents. The ultimate reality of man's destiny. See, dear brothers and sisters, I'm not trying to space out the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but there's so much that that man taught that you that were close around him never understood. So you want to discard the man and his message before ever extracting its value. You may if you want to, but by the grace of God, I will hold on to that man and the message that he brought until he says, change it for something else now I want to stop here for a moment I'm not going to keep you long now when God gives a prophet vision what does he give him he gives him sight into the unseen 
and ears to hear the unheard. When a man knows what is around the corner, he can prepare today. Yes, sir. Therefore, Pharaoh, when he had a troubling dream that he could not understand and interpret, one of those who was with Joseph in prison said to Pharaoh, look, I know a young man that may be able to interpret your dream. When Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, he gave Pharaoh vision. Before the dream was interpreted, Pharaoh had no vision and the nation was about to perish. But when Joseph interpreted his dream, Joseph gave Pharaoh a glimpse of reality yet unmanifested. Right. So Pharaoh was able to prepare for the seven years of famine through understanding how to work with the seven years that would be productive. Do you see? Where there is no vision, the people perish. Now the Honorable Elijah Muhammad whether you want to agree or not, was a visionary among us. Yes. Not produced by the schools of the white man, That's right. but produced by the mercy and beneficence of God for you and me yes. to give us vision. Hmm. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is not physically among us. Some say he's dead. The reality is, He's not physically present. Really don't make any difference if his vision is here. And there are those who have been prepared by him for this day when he would not be physically present. That man knew the time. He taught us the theology of time. So if he knew a day was coming when he would not be among us, he prepared for that day and he prepared men and women for that day. Huh? You might not be doing your job. You might not be on your post yet. But you have been prepared. And if you don't get on your post, he will continue to whip you until you recognize that you got a job to do and you can't lay down any longer and you cannot leave me out here by myself doing this job when you were prepared to help me do this job. Louis Farrakhan, I don't know what my name means to you or what my face means to you. And it really is irrelevant, you know? No, it's quite relevant. <laughs> but what I want to say is that I love this man, Elijah Muhammad. Yes. I have never seen or known a better man in my lifetime. I wasn't here to walk with the prophets of yesterday. But I know them all by having walked with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now I am a student, not a master, but a student. I haven't gotten my diploma yet. Not my degree, not my diploma. For he said, like Jesus, greater things that I do shall you do. And I haven't done it yet, so I'm still growing. You understand? All right. But if that wise teacher knew he would be gone, Somebody would have to have his vision yes. Listen. so that they could see with his eyes, right. hear with his ears, yes. and work with his hands. 
to produce the reality of what he said God willed for you and me. I cannot say with truth that other students of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not glimpse his vision. I would be a vain, self-centered, arrogant fool to say such. I will never say such. But I know this. I have glimpsed his vision. Yes. And if you watch me, you will see that I'm working on something. And I'm not working on something that is in my head of myself. I'm working on the vision given to me by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And God bless me to understand it to the degree that he has opened it up to me. Now, you look at the mosque and school on Stony Island Avenue. That's not what we're after. If you diminish it to just a little old mosque for some Muslims, and I say that in that way mockingly, in a little old school for some Muslim children, you don't understand. You have not yet glimpsed the vision of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad wanted that building not for what it was, but for what he saw he could produce from that site. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir. You all said he paid too much for it. He paid four million. He said to me, I would have paid 10 million. So I drove around it this morning and looked at it. I said, dear apostle, why would you pay 10 million? I said, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. It wasn't for the building that was on the property. It was for what he envisioned that would be on that site ultimately and what it would mean to all black people in America and throughout the world. He's not interested in a mosque. Not like the preachers. Right, right. I got to have a church. Come on, man. You got to have one. No, 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 that's not Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad wanted a significant place that was dignified from which the elevated, dignified message of Islam that represents a new world view would emanate from. And would go around the world from that place and bring people from all over the world to that place. For that place he envisioned as a national center for the re-education and retraining of the black man and woman. Now what kind of knowledge would emanate from such place? You can go to any mosque in the world, including Mecca. And you will not find the wisdom that will be emanating from that place. Why that place? Oh, I don't want you all to get excited and get angry. But the knowledge of resurrection of human beings into their original state as the glory of God is a supreme knowledge. I will close by quoting from the scholars interpretation of three letters of the 14 secret letters that are in the Quran called the Mukata'at. Aleph, Lamin. These are letters that the scholars wrestle with to try and understand what it means. God doesn't waste nothing. So if God put it there, Aleph, 
let me and the scholars are fascinated to this day over these 14 letters called the Muqattaat. Then there is much of the Quran that yet needs to be what? Understood. Now, the scholars, I'm just going to use the scholars' words. The scholars say, Alif Lamin, they translate it to mean, I, Allah, am the best Noah. Beautiful words. Stop. And we'll stop our lecture right there. God knows best. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? A God God knows better than everybody else. God knows best. That's right. That's right. But what else does it mean? It means that the quality of his knowledge is the superlative degree. Do you follow me? Yes, sir. The quality of what you know and I know is in no way comparative to the quality of God's knowledge of a thing. When God creates mountains, you see it. And you may know something about the geological formation, rock formation. But the quality of your knowledge or know is so weak in comparison to him who created the mountain yes. and had purpose for what he did. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So when God reveals the knowledge of a thing, oh. that knowledge that he reveals is absolute. And therefore you and I who have never been taught of a thing by God cannot see the thing as God sees it. Mm. Do you hear what I'm saying? No, yes, oh, I don't know whether you're following me. But when Master Farad Muhammad revealed to us the nature and origin of the white man, and everybody that was supposed to be a scholar said, Where'd you get that? Hmm. Where'd you read that? Show me the book that that came out of. Because what you wanted was some limited scholar of the world yes. to verify an absolute knowledge. <laughs> they, you wanted a man whose knowledge of all things is very limited to pass judgment on the supreme wisdom of God and his knowledge of things and insight into things. Now what the Caucasian wants us to do is give up the supreme knowledge of them as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now you can give it up if you want. You can say that they are something that they are not. You can help yourself. But you can't make a fool out of God's wisdom. Every one of these that tried to make the white man. Other than what Allah revealed him yes, to be. On, has ended up in the fisherman's net. Yes. With the white man with his foot on your neck yes. when yesterday with the knowledge that Elijah Muhammad gave you were able to cast off the yoke of the slave master both east and west now since you've given up the white man in the west now you got the white man in the east and you still as big a slave under Islam as you were under Christianity 
You are nothing but a 20th century slave yes. to white mentality, white form, white norm, white culture, white value, white supremacy yes. in the name of Christianity, in the name of Islam, in the name of socialism, in the name of communism, in the name of nationalism, in the name of Buddhism, in the name of transcendental meditation. If any one of us who follow the honorable Elijah Muhammad allow the world to snatch the vision of that man out of our heart, then we go blind and we become helpless and a prey to the powers of the world. You may say, that was what we saw as babies. But don't give it up. That's right. See deeper. <laughs> See more. Don't discard that vision, lest you become blind all over again. And so, dear brothers and sisters, The Honorable Elijah Muhammad knew that we would become divided. And he knew that rancor and bitterness would set up in our hearts for each other. He also knew that envy and jealousy would manifest among us and tear us apart. But he also knew that we would return not only return to each other but we couldn't even return to each other until we return to Allah in the person of Master Farad Muhammad see don't say it you could say I thank Allah for Master Farad Muhammad you could say that if you understand what you're saying but if you say it and don't understand, then you make Master Farad Muhammad something other than who he is. And if you do that, you lost the vision. See, I don't want to waste a lot of time on that. But the originator is Allah, right? Yes, sir. And if the originator was always looking for that perfect man through whom a perfect world could come into existence and ordered it from day one. Boy, that's happy. When that becomes reality, God smiles and said, here he is. The scriptures of the Bible puts it like this. This is my beloved son, you know, Ooh, yes. in whom I'm well pleased. In other words, this is what I produced mm. by my will. I just said be. Mm -hmm. Now when you say Allah, we thank Allah for him. Yes, we thank Allah the originator for this one who manifests Allah to us. Yes. You understand? Yes. Now, I'm going to conclude this. And I'm sorry if, if I didn't make it clear to you, particularly those who are here for the first time. You, know, you are very blessed people. And the white man knows that you are blessed. And he wants to rob you of your destiny by tricking you and me. <laughs> Deceiving us with false friendship. A smile and a pat on the back. And a wink of the eye. And a white woman for your bedroom. And a white man for yours. Your poor pitiful black man don't know how to treat you sister. He's terrible. But then the white man comes in that vacuum and he sweet talks you. 
smiles at you. He wants to sneak into the hereafter through your womb. <laughs> That's what he be doing. <laughs> that place, 7351 Stony Island Avenue. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad looked at it when it was first being built by the Greeks. And he wanted it then. And he finally got it. And I say respectfully to my dear brothers and sisters of the American Muslim Mission. It is not the construction of that place. But it is what you envision from that construction that you can build to make a sign of the greatness of Islam. See, Elijah Muhammad had a vision for that house. And it's our duty to make it real. So we are striving to raise the monies to reacquire that. Why should you reacquire something? that you once acquired, why should you have to go through that again? That's very interesting. Because that's a good question. But see, you didn't acquire it the first time. He went and got a loan from Gaddafi and bought it in our name. For us. And then we blew it. We blew it. By our rebellion, we blew it. By our division, we blew it. We blew all that he had built. To give you what? The knowledge of what envy and jealousy and division and hatred will do. But look at the mercy of God. I mean, oh, what a magnificent. Magnificent God. Look. Y'all all right? The God allows us to buy banks, farms, factories, airplanes, trucks, lamb packing plant, chicken farms. You name it, we had it. Over 40 million, some say 80 million dollars worth of property. We didn't know what Elijah Muhammad was doing. We just believed in him. So we gave him our money. And that man turned paper. Just paper. Ain't that what that is? It's just paper. It's got value that they put on it, but it's paper, brother. This ain't worth you. You can get a million of these and somebody will kill you. No, 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 no. 5,000 of these. <laughs> maybe, maybe 500. And they would not. <laughs> My little brother said $5. <laughs> and then knock us over for paper. I squeeze it, it don't say ouch. I throw it down, it don't say nothing. I step on it, it don't speak. But it is worth more than you. That's right. Very sad, brothers and sisters. Our vision is kind of messed up. Now, Elijah Muhammad got it for us. What any good father would do, any good mother would do. Now it's about to be lost. The children say, wait a minute. Daddy got this for us. He had something in mind. Yes, did. Then the children get together. Daddy's off in the corner looking. Yes. <laughs> yes. Are they going to lose all my hard work? No. And the children get together and say, now listen, we've been at odds. 
But man, we can't let daddy's house go like this. He built this for us. What should we do? We should pool our resources and get it. Why should we do it? Because if we do it, we'll never let it leave us again. He did it for us. So we, we didn't feel it like we should. But now when we do it for ourselves, then that mortar and that stone has the scent of blood and sweat and tears in it. Well, then don't try to take it from us again. Because just like the Muslims will defend the Kaaba at Mecca, we'll defend what we build with our life's blood. And that's what it's all about. Because if we allow the enemy to take what we build, then we have nothing to pass on to our children for them to build on. So when they come for it, we got to die before we give it up. You understand? That's why people fight for their country. Because they want to pass something on to their children. What do we have as black people to pass on to our young? Here's some young, powerful men in front of me who has passed anything on to them but the naked squalor and disease and degeneracy of the ghetto. What do you have, black brother? Nothing. Where's your mama? Well, I, I don't play no dozens, man. But I, I don't really know where she is. You know? Where's your father? I never seen him in life. Mm -hmm. That's right. What school? I ain't interested in no school, man. What do you do? Well, I just hang out, you know what I mean? Sell crack, you know what I mean? Take a few dollars in there, you know what I mean? Kill a few niggas every now and then. <laughs> Get in my way. What you passing on to your people? What are you passing on, sisters? Talk to me. You bringing the babies here without a man to help you. You don't have a school to put your babies in. You send your babies right back to the same enemy that destroyed your mother, your father, and you. When are we gonna say, when are we gonna say that enough is enough? See, so look. God is great. Listen. <laughs> Look. The government, the United States government, was afraid of Muslims. He didn't want no strong nation of Islam. You with a flag that's different from the stars and stripes. That's the universe, sun, moon, and star. Yes, yes. Allah gave that to us as a flag. Because yes, yes. the whole earth and fla other flags depend on that one for their sustenance. Yes. All right. Sun, moon, and star. Yes. He gave you the best. Because yes. he intended to make you the best. Yes. Now your little baby's saluting a new flag, the crescent. Pledging allegiance to Allah, yeah. God. Yeah. I can't have this. Them niggas ain't pledging allegiance to me. That's right. <laughs> I didn't raise no niggas to pledge allegiance to somebody else. Get up, nigga, and put your hand on your heart. And start lying with me. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for white people. Is that what you want your children to do? I don't want these young men in that kind of madness as a Mickey Mouse house and they know it. You want to send them to Disneyland? Send them to school. That's the new Disneyland. Everybody in there is either Goofy or Minnie and Mickey Mouse. You ain't got nothing in there. 
a Donald Duck kind of teaching? Count with me, boys. Count with me, girls. Let me tell you the history of Goofy. See, America was discovered by us white folks. Aren't you glad? Whole race of Indians here. We just overlook them, man. You goofy now. And after you get that goofy Donald Duck Mickey Mouse garbage, you come out talking about George Washington. We just had President's Day. George Washington never told a lie, you know. Columbus ain't never set foot over here. Man was down in the Caribbean so upset. Because he was trying to find a new route to India that he called the people that he saw Indians because he was so upset. He didn't want to admit that he blew it. So he called them Indians and make them call themselves Indians. <laughs> this white boy is something, man. Right, Goofy? Right. This cracker come down out of Europe came into what is called Africa, he named it Africa. You didn't call it Africa, the white man did. Now here you come, Goofy. Who are you? I'm an Afro-American. Did you exist before the man called it Africa? Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you exist before medical Vespucius called this America? Uh, I, I think so. And then they give you a test to see how goofy you have become. <laughs> and when you pass the test, you got all the answers right. They give you an A. And you say, I'm the smartest goofy in the world. You come out with them damn A's and B's and you can't build nothing for your goofy self. You can't build nothing for your goofy children. You can't even set up a damn store on the corner. The Arabs got to come, the Koreans got to come. Everybody else got to come and your damn You gonna tell me about your PhD degree, your master degree, a master goof? A Dr. Daffy? Not Kadaffy, Daffy. Daffy Duck, Goofy Duck, Minnie Mouse, Pokey Pig. Yes, sir. Dopey. You know who Dopey is, right? Yes, now you hear banging your arm, snorting in your uh, nose, popping pills. What the hell are you but the dopey of the right. of the cartoon series? Okay. You make a joke out of life. Because yeah. you got no vision. But look at the way God works. The enemy planned to destroy us through the probate court. The enemy planned to destroy us by putting ministers against each other that we would fight each other and destroy the house. Mm -hmm. And then when they sat back, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was gone, they sat back and they laughed. They said, where's that fire con? Well, he about destroyed now. Last I saw him, oh yeah, there you go. He's in bad shape. He's gone back to Goofyville. He lost the vision. Where's them powerful representatives of Elijah Muhammad? Oh, there's a cab driver. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's another one. Oh, he's drunk. Poor thing. Oh, there's another one. Oh, she didn't turn out to be a prostitute. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, no. man, they really messed up. They lost the vision. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men will never put these niggas back together again. And the white man sit back and laugh. The Imam Wadadeen changed everything according to a new vision that he had. 
And the more you change things, the more things changed. And the more he changed it, the more they changed until you couldn't recognize nothing anymore. The people lost their vision. He was preaching a lot of light, but no heat. Therefore, the brotherhood was destroyed. And God said, go ahead. Do your thing. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fence, Silas Muhammad got up and said, since nobody would defend the honorable Elijah Muhammad, I have to defend him. And Silas stood up and defended him in the way that he knew, following a vision. Farrakhan got up by the grace of God. Then other ministers got up, but they never were together. They came together, talked for a minute. Well, I can do it without that nigga. I don't need him. Ew. Come together and then break apart. Come together and then break apart. So we all begin to work. And the Satan said, <laughs> look at them niggas. Elijah Muhammad would turn over in his grave looking at these people. But a God was working. See? The family sued the imam and the American Muslim mission. And the judge, now he's going to deliver a crushing blow. The judge says, ah, $13 million judgment against the community. The 17 million. I think it was one-tenth or one-eleventh of all the estate that you all sold off belongs to the family. And therefore, I'm assessing that to be 17 million or 13 million dollars. And that's it. And they about to have a sheriff's sale and sell the mosque, sell the school, sell everything that the Muslims built to the highest bidder to satisfy the judgment. Now I know that there's no child of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who wants money above seeing the work of their father restored where it would give them something to work in and for and through. There's no family member of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that want that. Not the children of Sister Clara Muhammad, nor the children of his wives. Not one. I don't believe that. I believe that every child of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would not want to see the work of that father destroyed. I have to believe that. And even if any of them did, the followers who sweat and blood went into this, they don't want to see it destroyed. And they don't want to see no stranger to the vision of Elijah Muhammad take hold to that property and twist it into something else. See? So now the community says, well, in order to stop this sheriff sale, we got to go into bankruptcy. So our brothers and sisters, the American Muslim Mission, they go into bankruptcy. And the judge upholds the bankruptcy petition of the, the American Muslim Mission. And then he says, now you got to sell off all the assets to pay off your indebtedness to the estate of Elijah Muhammad, which means that every one of the Muslims would stand to lose everything that they work for. And you should. If you're not going to be united. If we're not going to be brothers and sisters of each other. We should lose everything including our lives. Because our everything, our whole life is a mockery. To what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad lived his life among us for. But look at how God works. He is... John Muhammad, the brother of Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he's working in Detroit. We respect each other, but we're not together. Silas Muhammad, we have met, we have talked, we have agreed. He's working in Atlanta, and I'm here in Chicago. He's still building 
we're still building, but there is a view in his mind and in my mind that one day we'll be like this. Now there's Theodore Hamza in Cleveland, one of the ministers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. John Muhammad here in Chicago, who was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's minister in San Francisco. And there are others who are working, Jeremiah, Shabazz, and others. They're working. That should be applauded. Because when you've been taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you have a responsibility. Whether you agree with Farrakhan or not, if you agree with Muhammad, stand up and preach what you know from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wants you with me. Yes, he does. So he don't care how much you work. He don't bless your work with the success that it would be blessed with if you and I would sit down to the table of brotherhood and say, Come on, brothers. Come on, sisters. Let's go to work and rebuild. Now, what you've learned, wherever you have gone, is valuable. But it ain't valuable where you are. It's only valuable when we pool our resources and build the nation of Islam properly. And that's all of our responsibility. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm about to close. I have watched Imam Wadiddin Muhammad. That's the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. None of us who've been in the nation for any length of time can deny that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had great hope in that son as the most deeply spiritual and sensitive of his children from Sister Clara Muhammad and one that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad expected at a certain point, years ago, that he would succeed him and keep the nation going. You see? We can't deny that. Who know Wallace Muhammad when he was Wallace? That's a brilliant young man. There was no minister that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had that could compete with him, including Malcolm X, in the heyday of Malcolm. He couldn't compete with the scholarship of Imam Wadiddin Muhammad. No, sir, none of us. None of us. What are you saying, Farrakhan? I'm only making an, an admission of truth. Yes, sir. Okay? Now, what I'm also saying is, I don't care how wise you are, the son never got wiser than his father. And the evidence is out here as proof that he wasn't as wise as his daddy. If he were as wise as his daddy, he never would have lost what his daddy had gained and would have built in 13 years on the base of what his daddy had done. But since he lost everything that his daddy built and didn't build anything on his own, then we can only conclude from that, not as wise as your father. And if you're not as wise as your father, you should have been wise enough to follow your father. <laughs> See? So now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want you to take this out of context and try to make me an enemy of the imam or him an enemy of me. That man had to do what was in his heart to do and he did it. And if he studies what he did and we study what he did, we learn a lot of lessons. Now he claimed to be the Mujeddid, right. meaning the reformer, the Christ, right. are all them good names. Now he's quit the post and recognizes I can't handle these black people. All right. My father just had a method of dealing with black folks. <laughs> I don't know what my father had, but he had something, I think. I better go back and check my daddy out. <clears throat> the fact that God has kept him alive should tell you that God is not through with him. See, you ain't got no business in this, nor I, in judging. Because we don't know what God has in his mind. Leave judgment to Allah. The nation had to come down in order to go up again permanent. Right. 
Right. It had to come down because there was something in it that God wasn't pleased with. All right. Why do you say that, Farrakhan? Because Allah permitted it to come down. Now look at this. I don't consider myself no, no brilliant man, you know. I don't consider myself highly learned or highly intelligent. I really don't. The nation had to come down in order to go up again permanent. It had to come down because there was something in it that God wasn't pleased with. Right, right. Mm. Yes, Why do you say that, Farrakhan? Because Allah permitted it to come down. Yes, right. Now look at this. I don't consider myself no, no brilliant man, you know. I don't consider myself highly learned or Highly intelligent? I really don't. I am gifted all right. But I don't consider myself as brilliant as some people that I see. No, I just don't see myself like that. But what I have is more powerful than knowledge. Well, what is that, Farrakhan? What is more powerful than knowledge? The Spirit of God Himself. If you are endowed with God's Spirit, you are endowed with the energy of His life. And in that Spirit, there is a guidance. See? I may not have the wisdom of the Imam with respect to the Arabic and the Quran, but that's not... You got that, but he ain't done nothing with it. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that, brother. That's, That's not where it's at. There's more Arab scholars in the world than you can shake a stick at, but look at the condition of the Arab world. So it ain't in Arabic that the salvation is. <laughs> so you can study Quran all day and recite every surah in Arabic and still be a nigger. <laughs> And you can wrap yourself up in the Bible and in Jesus. And they no understanding and you, you still what the white man made you. Right. See, but there's something that God gave me. And it is that that has guided me and this community. Yes. And now the little fire on it, even the white man slept on me. Yes. And he said, he ain't too much. He's just a mouth. He just talk, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's all God said. In the beginning was the word. <laughs> the word brought everything else. Now look, while everybody was laughing at me, when we got started, I didn't mind nobody laughing. Because I loved that man, Elijah Muhammad, and I was not going to see his name trampled in the mud. I knew too much of the good that he had done for me and for everybody that I saw in the nation of Islam and beyond. So I stood up on faith with the Spirit of God. And let me tell you something about faith and God's Spirit. See, today, I don't necessarily have to read a lot of books. But the stuff that's coming to me and through me, you can't find in books except hints. <laughs> that's true. That's true. What I'm saying, you can write books off of it. Right. I'm not making no vain statement now. But the Spirit of God and faith will lead you to understand yes. what yes. others can look at and study for years and never come to right. see. Now that is God's gift to me. And therefore I'm not afraid to meet with the scholars of the world now. Not saying that I know the book. Because that would be a lie. But I know what I know. From Allah and the book. 
and I will put what I know from Allah against that which any scholar has on the earth and I don't believe I'll come out second best. Now what is this? What is happening? The imam looked at me and thought I was a man that just wanted leadership. And many of you thought the same damn thing. You thought that I would do anything to be a leader and that's why I walked away from the imam. You don't know me. I knew that the father had given me the seat the day Elijah Muhammad was gone. I've been knowing that. And there are many that was around the father that knew that the father had me in mind, not his son. The son had a job to do, and the son was going to do it. So Farcon, if he had fought the son before the son's job was done, he would not have been successful. I stepped down, stepped back, stepped out of the picture because I didn't believe I knew the way. I didn't want no leadership of you. Who the hell want to lead you? But somebody that God sent or somebody that's completely out of their damn mind. I ain't crazy. I know what you are. You the worst damn thing in the world to lead. You are something, man. And don't feel hard with me. If you want to see what it's like to suffer, you stand up and try to help black people. You really want to know what it's like to be hated by your own, stand up and try to help black people. And if God gets you up a little bit, give a, put a suit on your back that look better than the suit your brother got, your brother would damn near make you naked in order to justify his war against you. This is a sick people, man. Ain't no damn nobody that want to live long want to lead you. Because you kill every damn body that want to help you. That's right. That's right. Is it no lie? Excuse me for saying damn. But you kill every damn body. Because you damn everybody that would help you. You look at people only after they're dead. Now Martin Luther King is our man, right? Now Malcolm is our man, right? Poor Carter G. Woodson. He's the one that started Black History Week. Look at the hell that he caught by even criticizing the educational system and what it was producing. We were just at Tuskegee. Booker T. Washington was a giant man. But what did the people think about him when he was here? Look at Garvey. Can't nobody help you except God be with him. Well, I'm saying I back down from this. And I thank Allah that I did. Because if I knew then what I knew now, I'd probably be dead. And a lot of you be dead too. Because I'm not a punk, man. You ain't got no power to equal the power of the Jew. Not you. If you don't see me fighting Jesse, it ain't that I can't whoop the man. I don't get no joy out of whipping my brother. I could have fought Imam Warith Dean Muhammad. That ain't no big thing to do. But I don't get no joy out of fighting the son of my father. But if you want to see a fighter, then when the white man attacked me, when the government attacked me, that's when you see what's really in your brother. I didn't back down from the big enemy. You just a punk enemy. And it wasn't me that backed down from him. The Jew and the government got the hell away from me. 
That's when you see what kind of heart a man is made of. Not when he smacks his own brother, but when he take low with his brother, but jump out and knock the hell out the enemy. That's when you see you got a fighter, man. I take a lot from black people, brother. But it ain't that I'm a punk. I take a lot from black people because I love you. And if I didn't love you, if I had a big ego, I'd have killed half the people that I'm working with today. But it ain't about no damn ego. It's about what God wants. So in the end now, they order the imam to sell the property. And here we come. Brother imam, we'll buy it. Why would you buy it? Because of a vision that Elijah Muhammad yes. put in my head. What is the vision? First, the vision of the reunification of his house. That means more to me, brothers, than life itself, and I'm willing to give my life to produce the unity of Elijah Muhammad's family and followers. Now, I can't help that. You may think I'm a damn fool, but I was made this way. I love the man, and I love his family. They may not love me, but that's immaterial. I have a vision in my head. I ain't got no dream like Martin. I got a vision. And that vision will become reality because it was reality when he spoke it. There's work for the imam to do. If God spares life, that man got work to do. There's work for Raymond Sharif. He got work to do. There's work for that family. They got work to do. There's work for these ministers. They got work to do. But they can't work in opposition to me. They're going to have to work with me. And so God has to show me successful as he beats down their opposition that they will see, well, it's time that we should throw in with our brother. The sign of it was, I've been wanting that mosque. I tried to buy it with the help of Allah and the believers in 1983. The imam wouldn't sell it to me. I did not want no palace house of Elijah Muhammad. What man wants a home over a mosque? For the people. But when the home. Was about to be sold. Within three weeks. To Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. I know that they're not followers. Of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. He might have had. Wine and pork. Just swimming in that house. Well now you hot with me. Because we retrieve his homes. Mm. Farrakhan, you got what you want. Is that what you think? Mm. You miserable worm. <laughs> Don't put that crap on me. I can buy a home. Yes, sir. Why would I want that man's house? That house is a symbol. It's bigger than stone. Yes. Because it was what he built from the ground up as the capital house of the nation of Islam. So we retrieved the house. I said, why the house and not the mosque, Allah? We're going back. When the messenger came out of prison, He got 48, 49 South Woodlawn Avenue before you got 
5335 South Greenwood. He got it three years before you got the mosque. Talk to me. Well, let me tell you, we got that house in 85 and three years later, 88, if it be the will of Allah, you will march back into a mosque that is yours, a national center for the re-education of our people. God wanted to test you. And what kind of rotten hearts you have. That you're not worthy. Because a man. That lifted up the name of your father. When it was crushed to the earth. Right. You should rejoice to see him in your father's house. But if your heart. Is diseased. Full of envy and jealousy. Then you won't walk with us. Into the greater building. Unless you repent. Worms crawl back under the damn rock that is your house, and you will always live in filth and slime with your damn cockroaches and rats and your dirty dishes because you're supposed to love for your brother what you love for yourself. Everything you give me, I give it back. I hardly ever break down and buy a suit for myself. It's you that's on my mind. It's the imam that's on my mind. It's the family that's on my mind. It's the condition of black people that's on my mind. Can no damn house make me happy unless you make me a thing like you? I ain't no thing. Cars can't make me happy. I like them. But what the hell do you think I am, a man that sit down in a car and say, oh, look at this car. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, boy. And you see me down there bowing down to some wheels? Come on now. I ain't like you, I'm a wheel watcher. <laughs> Here come one now. <laughs> oh, put me in your bag. <laughs> hey, Papa got a brand new bag, man. <laughs> okay, I think it's time for me to go out. <laughs> Overstay my welcome. I just want to say to you, dear believers, look. When we said to the American Muslim Mission, we will buy it. No arrogance intended. Vision. You are our brothers and sisters. We soldiered together. We withstood the attacks of our enemy together. We prayed together. I can't buy something and then push you out like you got it and pushed us out. I can't do to you what you did to me. I'm not that. I wasn't made that way. I was made by God from the beginning to help his servants. And to help his servant, I had to have a heart that would reconcile things that did not want to come into brotherhood and unity. Vision. I ask you to help me retrieve these properties for the whole nation. And if that hurts you, well, why should we retrieve it for the whole nation? The nation ain't done nothing. And Bilal has put us out. Why should we let them in? See, I know that's the way with some of us think. See, but I'm trying to raise you from a nigga mentality. Right. You're not going to make me like you. All right. By the help of God, I'm going to raise you with his help up to another level of thinking. Right. You hypocrites. 
You love Jesus. You damnable liars. You love Jesus. You can't forgive nobody. You forgive that cracker though, don't you? Yes, yes. A heartless, cruel bastard. That had murdered your parents. You ain't got no hate in your heart for him, but your hate is reserved for your own black self and your own people. What have any of us done to you that would equal what the white man did? Oh, yes. You can yes. forgive that cracker, but you won't even walk to your oh, brother right. Right. and say, brother, I had a bad understanding of you. Let's, let's talk it out and let's get it together. Right. You can't talk to your sister. Right. Mm. I ain't going to talk to her. Mm. Hell, she think. Right. <laughs> your mean nigger self. Right. Come on, brother. Come into the mosque and Somebody gives you the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Mm. Mm. Is this what Elijah Muhammad worked for? Is this what he sacrificed for? A bunch of ungrateful worms? Mm. If I can forgive them who plotted to kill me, you mean you can't forgive one another? Mm. I'm going to close. Um, I was out in Phoenix this past week and somebody, how the enemy does, he drops little seeds and was actually plotting the murder of Brother Jabril. And what happens is, once you grow to dislike someone who served you, like Brother Akbar or Brother Khaled, people who got faults, but they love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and they try to work hard to make Islam great. They rub you the wrong way one day. Mm -hmm. And you carry that like Jesus carried the cross mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you, are you insane? Mm -hmm. And then you turn around and fall down on your knees and ask the God to forgive you. And some of you don't speak to your mothers. Mm. You are terrible damn people, boy. Mm. Terrible. You got a father out here. You say, well, a no good nigga. But if it wasn't for that no good nigga, you wouldn't be here. Right. Right. You mean to tell me you can't forgive your father? who was made a nigger by the same white man that made you one? You can't forgive your father? You can't go to your father and say, well, I know you ain't nothing, but it ain't your fault, daddy. The white man made sure he made black men nothing. Yes, he did. I know you had pleasure with mama and walked away, but that's what I'm doing with the young girls on my block today. Think about that. Teach. I ain't no better than you, Daddy. We got to get ourselves together, Daddy, and turn this around. Why can't you respect your father? If you can't respect your father without whom you wouldn't even be here. And if you can't honor your mother through whom you came and you wouldn't be here without her, then I don't stand a chance. Don't nobody stand a chance. God don't stand a chance with you. Ungrateful things. No, brothers and sisters. We were all made a trial for each other. And we've hurt each other and we've done things that we shouldn't have done. We've said things which we shouldn't have said. 
But how long are you going to carry it? How long are you going to carry that madness? You mean to tell me you can't make an appointment, go see the brother that has offended you, sit down and talk, the sister that has offended you, go sit down and talk. You win each other. But as long as you carry that nasty attitude when I'm going on, who are you hurting? Come on now. So what I'm suggesting to you is that you know if you can't catch a glimpse of the vision that is in me from him and try to understand why forgiveness is necessary and of course repentance before forgiveness. Try to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing because it's a desire to see things reconciled that belong together that circumstances have broken apart and I'm telling you you will see the nation of Islam together stronger than it ever was you will see that You will see the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad restored. Yes, sir. You will see the ministers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, those that he want, yes, sir. restored. Yes, sir. You will see our people restored. Yes, sir. Just hang out a few more days. So I, I think I've maybe hurt your feelings, it's time to go. But you're going to have to grow up. And if I pronounce forgiveness, then you better not hold nothing. Then get away from me. Go on about your business. If you don't want what I want, what he wants, then why walk with me? Go on about your business. I want the reunification of us as the nation of Islam. Yes, sir. I want the unification of our people. I don't want us walking around fighting Christians right. because they believe a little differently from yourself. Aren't you the same people? Yes, sir. Then what is it between us and our Christian brothers and sisters? that you can't iron out with the wisdom of the Quran and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Everywhere I go today, the preachers are coming out. I didn't get a chance to tell you, but I've been everywhere since I last saw you. <laughs> and the preachers come out. I mean, at least eight to ten of them at every speech. And not no little weight, lightweight preachers, heavyweights. And after we get finished, well, sister was there yes. when it was about 10 in Columbus. Yes, and that, those beautiful preachers, they said, now we ready. That's mm. right. Last oh. night, where was I last night? Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it, Brother Abdullah Lark. I can't remember sometime from one day to the next the way I've been speaking. But last night, right up in Milwaukee. Preacher came to me and said, brother, thank you for leading the way. You've helped me, now I can preach stronger and better. I know what he was talking about. Do you think I care if that preacher goes in the church and don't say, or say, uh, uh, doesn't say, well, I, I met Louis Farrakhan and, and something he said from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stirred me. I don't care whether they ever mention my name in life. You can mention it or don't mention it. It's ir irrelevant to me. Because God gets the praise and the glory anyway. But the point is, if that man goes back to that church and begins to teach what he has heard, then the people in that church start growing like you grow here in the mosque. And before you know it, you ain't going to see no lines of division between Muslim and Christian. We'll all be saying the same thing and the scripture will be fulfilled. 
that we will be of one mind. And you know whose mind that is? It's the mind of God himself. So I'm going to leave you with this thought. God came to give you his mind. Take your mind and give you his. Let this mind be in you. The same that was in Christ Jesus. Do you know what that means? That it's already ordained. You can't stop it. You right now, and listen to me carefully, you, 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 all of you are growing into another kind of mind, another kind of way of thinking. Haven't you noticed yourself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know why the white man can't put the game over like he used to? Because you're growing into a new kind of mind. He don't know how to reach you just yet. God's mind is coming to you. May Allah bless us. Muslims, visitors, friends, help me. Yes, sir. To retrieve that sinner. And help me to complete the vision of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Believers, you cannot be successful if you're once a month Muslim. All right. Come on. Yes, sir. I don't come out often. There's no reason for you not to come. I don't want you to become a personality addict. Because Farrakhan it's not going to be with you forever. I'm a human being. And death will come to me as it comes to all men. What will you do? After me. Will you say, oh man. It's all lost. Farrakhan ain't here no more. You know what I mean? Let's go back to sleep. Is that what you're going to say? Then I need to leave you now forever. And never come back to you again. Because if you can't grow, then all of this is an exercise in vanity. And I don't need no worshipers. I ain't looking for none. I want you to grow into the mind of God. And that, that you that are a sheep will become a shepherd. And no longer be around here looking for a shepherd. You can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And the Lord ain't just my shepherd and not yours. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you wake up in your right mind? Wouldn't it be great if you could wake up, man, and God's mind is in your head? And you could say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You can if you want to say that. So I thank you all for this beautiful afternoon. Thank you, I thank Brother Abdul Allah for the wonderful lessons that he has been teaching. Yes. Yes, Deep, insightful, beautiful lessons. He can only be as effective as his support. Yes, sir. And you are his support and he yours. So when you hear, uh, is, is Farquhar coming out? That's irrelevant whether I'm coming out or not. Truth will always be out. Shining. Look at Sister Ava Muhammad. Look at the beautiful subject that she's been teaching. I hope you're not angry with me because because I let Sister Ava teach. And I spanked some Arabs yesterday and some Indians 
in a private meeting and in a public meeting. Say, man, you got to treat women better than this. That's right. That's right. So when she speaks, don't look at her biology. Listen to her theology. I'm very happy to see you. And I thank Allah for all of you. All of you. Even though they don't mean good. I thank Allah for you too. Because you help us to see better. How to serve God. It's true. There's nothing like a good hypocrite. You know what I mean? <laughs> to help you get on your post. You know what I mean? Just when you thought it was safe to get back in the seat. <laughs> here come Jaws biting on you again. You know what I mean? Hypocrites are good for the believers. <laughs> so happy hypocrites to you. <laughs> <laughs> but you put all these believers to work at the hypocrites too. Yes, sir. Make them work. Yes, sir. Let them go out and sell subscriptions to this wonderful right. newspaper. Yes, sir. The final call. Right. Sell ads to the paper. Sell the products. Yes. Help get the monies to get that center for all of our people. Don't look at it as no little mosque in school. For all our people, every black man and woman in America will benefit from that house. Hopefully, with the help of Sister Vanessa. Yes, that's her back there, standing on the wall. With the help of the video department and Nate Grant and others, that videotape should be ready for you, hopefully this week. And what I want you to do is have video parties. All right. Yes, sir. I know y'all know how to party, but I want you to... <laughs> I don't want you to party wrong. All right. <laughs> don't have no white lady there. I, don't, I mean cocaine. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and another one, too. She's, she'll help you become dopey. <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> so you been to school? Yeah, I've been to Disneyland. That's right. Well, this white man has made a joke out of all of us, you know? Yes, he has. When you have your video parties, you gather your friends. I want to make a clear announcement today. You know, I'm going to show you quickly that, you know, when we said Honorable Elijah Muhammad Educational Foundation, it's because we have a foundation that's tax exempt. The foundation is the government. The government grants you the right to have a foundation. And everything that you do in a foundation, you have to report to the government and they have to look in and they've never they're always looking in on us, but we don't know it, but, but we've never had the government look over our shoulders. We're not dishonorable people, and we don't want to invite them in. We are already tax exempt. So some said, Arab Elijah Muhammad Mosque and School, make your checks out too. But I don't want us to think that this is a Muslim thing. And I don't want the public to think, why should I help you build your church? I got my own church. See, this is not what this is. This is not your church, my church. This is a center from which the churches will be fed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, the schools, the universities yes. in the world will be fed from that house. It's a national center. It's almost like a Kaaba, yes, but I don't want to be sacrilegious. Yes, 
scholarship will come emanate from that house that will affect us, okay? So that's why I didn't want it to, to, to appear parochial and only for us. So it, the check should be made out to the National, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, H-E-M, H period, E period, M period, National Center Drive. So that we give everybody a wider focus, a wider vision of what this is. Not a mosque and a school. Because right. that's going to be a university yes. that will take us from K-1 all the way through college. All right. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, some of you are asking people to help you with your pledge. Maybe your family. Each one of us have pledged a thousand dollars. Right? Yes, sir. And that's a lot of money for poor people. A lot of money. Even rich people are, are slow to give you a thousand dollars. That's why they're rich. They put Frank Sinatra in the Jet magazine because he wrote a check to some black person for a measly a little bit of money. So, and these rich people, brother, they just give you token. That's right. But that thousand, suppose you go to your mother and your mother says, baby, I want to help you to get your pledge. I can't give you a thousand, sweetie, but I'll give you a hundred towards your pledge. And you have to know that it's honest to tell your mom, make it out to the National Center Drive. But if mom is helping you with your pledge, then she should give the money to you. And that puts a burden on you. Because if mom gives you the money and you put it in your pocket, if your friends give you the money and you pocket the money, rather than use it for what your friends intended for you to use it for, then brothers and sisters, you will never be a blessed person because you're a thief and you're a deceiver of those who would earnestly and honestly help you. But if they are desirous of helping you with your pledge, then they should make the check out to you and you endorse it to the National Center Drive. If they give you cash, then you give it on your name, but you show that person that gave you the money, the receipt, to let them know that they are really helping the drive and not giving you money and you panhandling in the name of the drive. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, that's not the way I wanted you to do it though. But if you do it that way, it's all right. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it that way. But I, am, am, am I clear? Yes. yes, sir. Okay, now, the reason I want you to sell subscriptions to the paper is because we got a great newspaper. Oh, yes. But that paper needs to be strengthened. And if we sell 100,000 subscriptions to the paper, we get the monies that is coming to us from selling the subscription, one third of it. But the paper, if you sell 100,000, the paper may get a million two in its treasure. Now you think about that. You make the final call able to hire better people, more qualified people. You actually put the final call in position to go back and buy a press again. Right. You put your paper in a position to become the national and international voice of black people just from selling a subscription. Right. The subscription is very important. Yes, selling an ad to the paper is very important. Now the products. Where are those products? You got them around here somewhere? I'm not a salesman, but... <laughs> you know, it took a lot to make these products. And if we, the nation, don't back the product, the product is not going anywhere. And who does it benefit?
Do you know that the people overseas want to buy the product? The Muslims in Canada, they say, we want the product. It's halal. We want the product. Well, if we sell that power pack, the money that you get from it, you can make your pledge with it, but power becomes stronger by you buying or selling the power pack. We are making ourselves stronger every time we sell the paper, uh, I mean a subscription, or sell the power product. You're making your community able better to serve black people. Now it looks like they may defrock Jimmy Swagger. Poor Jim and Tammy Baker, you know. That means there'll be a vacuum on TV. Farrakhan don't ever want to be a televangelist. But if I could get on television to represent the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I don't need but three years. And with your help, we put it on the satellite, shoot it across the water. Oh, man. Now, you may not want to help me because you think you're projecting Farrakhan. I wish you'd get away from that. Farrakhan just happens to be that one that can deliver the truth. And if you got somebody better, then bring him. But I, <laughs> I'm not going to say like Mike Tyson, you know, that maybe the one to whoop me ain't in the world yet. But see, what God has blessed me to be able to do, he's not going to double cross his servant. He ain't going to do that. He chose me to do what I'm supposed to do and he's going to make me do it. Yeah, you said it right. It's my time. And if I do what I'm supposed to do in my time, do you know what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to prepare these young ones for their time. Here's a son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I love this young man like my own son. I want to see him do what would please his father. See? I can't, I can't make him into his father. He can't make himself into his father. But he can be what God has made him to be. I got children that have been around me all my life. I know they can help me with you. Some of you, you just mean good, just don't know. Now this is hand and body lotion. Yes, sir. I put some on before I came here today. Have you noticed? <laughs> I mean, I eased in here so nice because of this hand and body lotion. <laughs> Sisters, you ain't never tried it? You ever? Oh. <laughs> Look at all the precious hands and tell me what that sound like. Look. Yeah. Try it, sister. Give it to your neighbor, then let her <laughs> hit a lick or two. <laughs> How is it? Is it okay? Let me try it. Me... Oh, no, you got it. <laughs> Pass it down the road. Maybe sister want to try some. Seriously, now that, it ain't Jergens, it's better. <laughs> ain't no poison in it. You eat. You tried it already. Oh, good. I try it every day myself. <laughs> that stuff is all right. Look here. I don't know how many of you use this condition. I do. You do? I use this condition. That's correct. There ain't no do rag here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Man, black folk got to do something for ourselves. That's right. And we're working on a new line of products. 
which will enable you to make more profit for yourself. But this is the, that liquid shower and bath soap. Excellent. And I don't use no other deodorant until I run out of this. And sometimes when I run out of this, I go without. Until <laughs> things catch up to me. <laughs> oh, the hair, hair pomade is not here. You don't have the hairdress. Oh, and they'll be in it this week, I know. Well, this is the way we want to raise the money. When you have that power party, you know, Muslims, you're inviting your friends into your home. What you should do is cook a little something, you know. Maybe at Whiting H&G or have a little hors d'oeuvres or something for your guests. It's only going to be 20 minutes or 30 minutes, the presentation on video, and it shows the properties. And then there's a little talk by me. You know, it's got to be little if it's 25 minutes, and I only speak about five or seven minutes, which is a miracle. You know? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> when the tape is a miracle tape. Yes, <laughs> and when you put it on, I will make an appeal to you and to your friends to help us. And maybe they might want to write a check right then and there. And what we wanted to do is as you get, as you get a percentage of the sale of the ads, a percentage of the sale of the subscriptions, a percentage of the sale of the product, if you hold power parties and raise monies for the National Center, you will get a percentage of that. It will go either toward your pledge or directly to you. Now, what we want is everybody to be in the circle of completion by May the 16th, which is the deadline. By May the 16th, if it is Allah's will, we intend to have raised $10 million. Inshallah, yes. $10 million. It doesn't cost that to buy the mosque. But we're going to have to refurbish it. And we must prepare the school and the teachers with their salaries. You ready? Yes, we got to finish this beautiful restaurant and bakery complex. And if we can do it all together by October the 7th, when it is the birthday of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we will have a National Savior's Day emanating from the Golden Domed National Center. Your school will have been open one month and I want every baby of ours out of the devil's school. I don't want one of them left in the white man's school. Bring them out. With that money, we'll get you the best teachers that money can buy. You're going to have to pay a tuition. I don't get hot. I'm going to stop you from buying the liquor. And the drugs, you're going to have to give your children better education. We all of this is within our grasp. But no mystery God is going to make it happen. You and I working from the spirit of God will make it happen. I want to see this year the followers of Imam Wadith Dean Muhammad and the followers of his father breaking bread together like a family. I want to see us as Muslims bury the hatchet of ignorance, not in each other, bury it in the ground. 
and let us go on and retrieve our people who are awaiting the rise of the nation of Islam. We can get back the farm in Georgia. It's nearly 4,000 acres. On it, there's a chicken farm. On it, there's a canning factory. On it, there are silos. You can't see that land except by the air. You got to get up in a helicopter because if you walked on your land, it would take you all day. We want to retrieve that farm and say to the Muslim community, come on, this is ours. And that's including you too. In the summer, you don't have no place for your children to go. Georgia, we're going to Georgia. We're going to Georgia and we bring our little babies down on the farm in Georgia so that these city dwellers Come on. can know what it's like to put a seed in the earth yes. That's right. and watch it grow. Right. Teach them what value the earth has right. to the liberation of our people. Yes. Help me yes, sir. get these properties back. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. You will do it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Huh? Yes, yes sir. sir. <laughs> The sisters are sounding off, brothers. <laughs> no men have suffered a great death in this world. And I know it's going to take a lot to resurrect us, brothers. But I know it's not because the brothers are not enthusiastic. All right, all right. Look at him, look at him trying to get something together. I, I said, I know it ain't because the brother is going to go. You see, the thing is all the way down in here rumbling, trying to get up to make a sign. Well, y'all got gas? Don't worry, sisters, the brothers are going to be there. The brother's going to lead the struggle Because a man is never supposed to put his woman out front A man is supposed to go out front for his woman Is that right? All right All right now, Two last things I want to say The men's class is tomorrow night All right all those who have a problem with their manhood, you don't be out tomorrow. We have a sissy night. <laughs> when is that, brother? There's no sissies here today, right? If there is, you wouldn't say so anyway. No, but even if you are that way, you come out tomorrow night, because that's the men's class. And any sissy would feel happy in a men's class, wouldn't you? I think the medicine got to go home, bro. But what am I saying about the men's class? Look, let me tell you something. I, look, I was a musician, and as a musician, you know, I wasn't sissy, but as a musician, you know, musicians get kind of soft, like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you've ever tasted a soft grape, yes, sir. a soft banana, yes, sir. a soft pear, yes. it's terrible. Yes, sir. A soft man is just like that. You ever see a soft? Go home and sit on a banana. That's right. Teach, minister. Just sit on it. And then, then unfold it and see what you're looking at. A soft man is like that to yes, a woman. Yes, sir. Is that right, sisters? Yes, sir. You don't want no soft man, do you? No, sir. 
Come on now. You don't want a man, you know, he's... Oh, no. He may not be queer. No, no, no. He may not be queer, but he's just a little strange. Like that. Do you want a man like that? No, sir. Oh, man. And we don't want no man, woman, do we, brother? Oh, hard Hannah coming in there. Teach, Minister. All these developed muscles. Sister, a man can't take that. A man want a woman, he want a woman. You know what I mean? You don't want to be sleeping next to a rock. <laughs> she don't want to be sleeping next to a puff. <laughs> so brothers, you got to tighten it up. <laughs> Sisters, don't you think you don't have to tighten up either? But that FOI class, man, that's the class where we as men get it together so we can go on out and do the job All right. for our women and our children. That's right. Brothers, you be out to your class tomorrow night. Yes, sir. Time is 7.30. Yes, sir. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock? Yes, Thank you, sir. 7 o'clock. And all of you, serious, this is a man's class. Yes, sir. All right. All right. And if you're not quite there, don't worry about it. Just come on out, you be there. Let me tell you something. I came to that FOI man with my soft musician self. Never had worked a day in my life, brother. I got into that FOI. And they drilled me up and down that floor and I felt what it was to be a soldier. Yes, sir. And I, I roared out of the FOI like a lion, brother. Snatched the police in his chest. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. Got a little carried away. But that FOI would do it to you, brother. It make a strong man out of you. Don't you make my voice a lie tomorrow. You come on in here and get the martial arts down, brother. Yes, sir. So you ain't got to do lots of energy. <sighs> teach, teach. <laughs> Get yourself in shape. Get in shape mentally. Yes, sir. And then the unity of men. Oh, man, ain't nothing like the unity of men. When a man love his brother oh. properly, properly. <laughs> we can do anything together, brothers. Anything we want to do, we can do it. And what we've got to show the world is that black men are alive today. Yes. Right. Black men are thinking. Yes. Black men are working Work. for their women and their children. Yes. We, the FOI, have to do that for the FOI is the back bone of the nation of Islam. Yes, sir. But what about the sisters? All right. They got a class too. All right. You got to make that class. Get in that class. Nothing more beautiful than women that can get along. Nothing more ugly than women that can't. So tomorrow night, it's FOI. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, if it be the will of Allah, mosque meeting. Thursday, MGT. Friday, study. Next Sunday, if it be the will of Allah, I'll be right back here. Right. Right. But I ain't coming. Unless you bring the people that I want to talk to. All right. Not that I don't want to talk to you, bring yourself. But you promised me. You said at FOI and at MGT, when I ask you to multiply, you got to bring five like yourself. Because when we go back to Stony, I want an army. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
I don't want to go there with a few of us in them white uniforms. I want everywhere they look up and down, stony, they see an army of black army men. Of black men. That's right. right. Yes, sir. You ain't with that? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. You sure you with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Them uniforms are pretty, you know. Yes, sir. And uh, when I was in the MGT class, I asked the sisters, did they uh, want to escort me if we go into the mosque? You know, I'm going to be surrounded with my family. Because I'll tell you, uh, brothers and sisters, there has never been anybody better for me or better to me than my wife and my children. That's right. That's right. That's right. They may not be to you what you would like, but to me, they're precious. And when I didn't have you, I had them. And when I don't have you, I will have them. And so a man should be surrounded by his family. You should be surrounded by yours. Amen. That's right. Listen to me. And I don't want you to feel bad. Because my family suffered with me when you didn't know me. When we were hungry, we were hungry together. When I used to have to go and pick food up out the streets in Boston, you weren't there, but them children, some of them were born into the world. They didn't know it, because their mama made them greens and stuff we picked up out the street. Tastes like they had just come out of the finest supermarket in the world. And when they were putting on Salvation Army clothes, you weren't there. And when they had to eat beans, not for a day, not for a week, but for years, we didn't even know that there was any other food in the world other than a bean. You weren't there then. You don't know what my children have been through. But there wouldn't have been no University of Islam in New York had it not been for my children. Because Elijah Muhammad told me anybody with the name Farrakhan behind his name should never be taught by a devil. Take them out of the white man's school. And there was no school. So I went to school the next day, snatched all my children out in obedience of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. All right. And they started in a room with a tutor. And from that grew a school. You weren't there when those sacrifices were being made. You weren't there when my life was threatened and I have to teach my children how to roll out of the bed at night onto the floor in case somebody shot into the window. You, you weren't there. You weren't there when my house was Molotov cocktailed and bombed with my wife and my children in the house. You were not there, but they live this. You don't know this, and they don't tell you this. So it seems to me that if I can do so much for somebody else's family, that's right. I ought to be able to do something for my own. And it seemed to me, it seems to me, that when my family comes, whatever way they come, you respect them because they lay the base that you're standing on. It's because they didn't have a father that you got a brother. Because when I was on the road, day in and day out teaching and woke you up, their mother had to be there with them because daddy wasn't there. So I think you ought to think about these things. Somebody said to me, this seemed like nepotism. 
your children. I said, man, what man builds something and don't build it and put his family in it? You a damn fool. You didn't build the final call. And if I started it, why shouldn't somebody from my family work in it? What's the matter with you? Would you not prepare a place for your children? Worms. Damn, we got some worm killer, you know? No, I don't even want to call it a worm because a worm is a good thing. Yes, it is. Worm is a good thing. Boy, that worm is something. No, it ain't no worms. That's, that's too good a name for some of us. What I'm trying to a maggot is better. That's right, says, thank you. I, I, I don't want you to be a maggot. I don't want you to feast on death. You know, please, you know, brothers and sisters, don't think so small. But when I went to the class, there was a sister there. Because when I go down to Stony that day, if it be the will of Allah, I mean, that FOI is going to be glistening. Right. You see them on their motorcycles? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Let the police department come out and take a look. Yes, sir. At what soldiers look like. Right. See, a black man with the teaching of Ambi Lies Muhammad in him is a, oh, my God, he's a soldier. Can you see yourself, brothers? Yes, sir. I can, I can see you. But there's a sister that says, she says she drive that Kawasaki 1000 and make it dance. She said, can I be in the escort, Brother Farrakhan? You know what I told her. You know I told her no, right? <laughs> you know I told her no? I said, sister, you, you can't bring no college document. You can't do this. <laughs> I told her why not? That's yes, right. Yes, right. You all mind riding with a sister, do you? No, sir. Yes, sir. Especially if she outrides you, right? <laughs> <laughs> the world is going to be watching that day because they yes. will never have seen what they see that day. May Allah bless you. The last thing I want to say is, it came to me the other night of this statue that I wanted to build, you know, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I said it was a bust, you know. No. A bust is not what we want. There's a picture that I saw in the home of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that was life size. It's about five foot, six and a half, his height inside a frame. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad with his fez holding the Holy Quran. I want that in bronze. I told you it would be on stone, right? But it would be black granite. But the granite will be in the shape of the Kaaba at Mecca. And Elijah Muhammad will be standing on top of the Kaaba with the Quran. And the verse from the Quran that will be on the stone that is a replica of the Kaaba deals with Abraham and Ishmael when they raised the foundation of the Kaaba. And then your names will be etched in that stone to live as long as that stone lives that you helped to lay the foundation of the new beginning of the nation of Islam. Now for those Muslims who have a problem with the messenger being up on the Kaaba, I want you to remember and reflect when Muhammad, peace be upon him, took the Kaaba at Mecca. Bilal yes. 
got up on top the car bus yes. and made the call to prayer. And here is a black man standing on the car by today calling the whole world yes, sir. back to the path of Allah and Islam. I'll defend it against the world scholar. I just yes, wanted you to know what your brother was thinking and yes, sir. see if you agree. Yes, Would you like to see one like that? Praise be to Allah. I ain't got but one more question then. Will you help me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I thank you for a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. I really appreciate your attendance. Brother Abdullah, thank you for your fine preaching. And Sister Ava Muhammad for your preaching and Brother Rodney. And uh, little Muhammad. <laughs> Got some big preaching for you to do. Thank you all for everything that you have done and intend to do. Thank you. As I greet you in peace and turn you into the hands of Sister Ava Muhammad, who will conclude the meeting with prayer uh, uh, and a call, of course, to acceptance. And uh, Brother Abdullah will close it out with prayer. I greet you in peace. Thank you. Thank you. As alaykum.